Bolidar and Clishery Cymru, and I welcome you all to Wales. That's Dion on the northeast coast of Wales, in a little town called Trithonin, and in English it is known as Hollywell. And the reason why I'm here is because of this famous location right behind me. The waters just below have been famed for a long tradition of pilgrimage and worship. Over the years it has said these waters performed miracles, from healing of the crippled and to the blind. This long-standing Catholic tradition has its origins with a grim reality, or where a young woman refused the lustful wishes of a local chieftain, and where his bloodlust went too far to which produced the legend of this healing spring. Now the legend that continues to inspire pilgrims from around the world to pick up that sense of unbroken Christian tradition in pilgrimage is based around the 7th century, in a region that we now know as Flintshire. St Winifred was of noble birth, and birthed to a family high ranking in Welsh nobility. At a time of life, Wales was not Wales, in fact Britain wasn't really Britain. It was a concoction of different warring fractions that fought each other for power, region, as well as influence. St. Winifred, being brought up in this brutal society, did not affect her spirit or her passion or her devotion to Christ. In fact, we are told in medieval manuscripts that she was loved by many and found common ground for all those that she disputed with. And she always shone a caring nature at heart. But not only was she pure and beautiful inside, physically, she drew the eyes of many. Suitors from all regions of Britain were known by her beauty, and neighbouring fractions went to the court of her father to ask for her hand in marriage. One such suitor was known as Caradoc, a warring Welsh chieftain who came from the Clovigian region of Wales, a hilly landscape which benefited him in times of war. Now Caradoc was a proud man, but unlike others, he also had a streak of evil within him. When he came to the father's court of Winifred, he demanded instead of asked, and believed that it was his God-given right to claim her hand being a neighboring Welsh fraction, to cement his rule in blood with their kingdom and his. But Winifred denied it. And she denied it not by words, but by her actions, by the time Carrado came to the court, she was already devoted and started practicing towards her faith. Needless to say, the pride of Carrado was furious. He felt humiliated in front of the court, stormed out and ridden hard back into the hills where he came from. Now, Corrado was not a man to allow something just to lie. In fact, his sense of humiliation started to corrode his mind. His lustful temptation towards Renifred started to pollute every aspect of his being. Winifred, unaware of this polluting danger, concocted of lust and hate towards her own person, continued to work under her uncle, a man who inspired her to follow the way of Christ and spiritual isolation. 
She spent much of her days upon his land, learning the ways of herbalism as well as the teachings of Christ. However, Caradoc was hell-bent on lust and pride and demanded by his own right that he would take the hand of Winifred. If she came, she came. If she didn't, a struggle did not matter to a man like this. The idea of war, the idea of bloodshed being caused by such a thing did not even enter his mind. So one day, as Winifred was away from the abyss of her uncle, she was bathing in the rivers below the woodlands. Caradoc hid within the brush, and as Winifred came out of the water, he attacked her. An aggressive, intense, and unforgiving scene was before those trees that witnessed that day. But Winifred was managed to get free, booted Caradoc square in the face, nearly breaking his jaw, and she ran half bare towards the abyss of her uncle. But before she got to the door, Caradoc grabbed her in a great embrace, and one slice of his sword decapitated this poor woman. As her head fell from her body, it crashed against the ground. And to Caradoc's amazement, of which gave even a man like him fear, the head opened up a large spring. The spring was gushing out so much water embedded into the body of Winifred, and a red trickle started to flow down the hill towards the abbess, which alarmed the pious monks, including Winifred's uncle. The monks followed this bloody trail and saw Caradoc cleaning the blood off his sword. Her uncle was devastated and cursed in God's name towards Caradoc. But Caradoc only looked and smiled, got onto his horse and galloped offward back to the hills he came from. Winifred's uncle, devastated in grief, cursed Caradoc and prayed to God that the earth would swallow the man up so that the devil himself could torture his soul. And surely enough, a year later, Caradoc was engaged in fierce fighting. It is said that Caradoc's horse gave way upon the ground, and Caradoc falling fell into a marshy bogland where his chainmail cemented him into the soil. What followed was a killing frenzy, for Caradoc's rivals surrounded him and drowned him as they pierced his body with Siak's sword and spear. Caradoc was left in a bloody mess of his own making, within the bog high up in the hills that he came from. However, before Caradoc's fall in battle and at the scene of Winifred's decapitation, this is where the miracle was said to have been born. Because during the night, her uncle affectionately sold the head upon the lifeless body of Winifred. But come morning, there was life within her again and that the scar was close to healing, as if she was cut 20 years prior. The tradition dictated is that the waters that ended her body allowed life to come back within her, proving that this spring was truly holy. And since then, this has been a landmark for pilgrimage. Kings of England, such as Richard I, came here and prayed at the water before he went on crusade. And Henry V, after the Battle of Agincourt, was said to have walked barefoot from Shrewsbury all the way to the well in thanks for his great victory. And for the many long years that followed, throughout the 1500s when Henry VIII challenged the Holy Roman Catholic Church, underneath Elizabeth I's reign where Catholics were heavily persecuted, this site still gained its pilgrims. 
and in 1604, during the reign of James I, Robert Catesby and the men that planned the destruction of Parliament came here as pilgrims. Was it just a prayer or was it part of their plotting to destroy the king and his parliament? I do feel it's important to say this, that springs, areas of water, hidden brooks and lakes have always held a sacred connection to the people of Britain. Way before the word of Christ came to this land, springs and brooks have always been places of worship and are held in pagan tradition as well as Christian. And it is lovely that this site here even openly says that no matter what faith you are, be it Christian, pagan, Sikh or have no faith at all, you are welcome to come and enjoy the sanctuary of St Winifred's Well. And throughout the years of time where wars come and go, kings and queens reign, this place has always served as a sanctuary to those that need it. And today, if you want to find a connection to your God, whatever spirituality that you hold dear to your heart, you can come here and bathe in its holy waters and pray for whatever illness is overshadowing your life, for the water to purify you and to make you whole again. So if you do come here, show respect and show kindness to the people that live and work here and enjoy the legend that is tied to the land.